first half highlighted by the ejection for Elias Harris. Well, a classic example of momentum and how a game can turn on a dime. And it all began with this play as we take a look, a foul on the three-point shooter under the basket area. We're gonna see fierce post play between Harris and McFarland. Watch McFarland's elbow that comes up and grazes Harris in the chin. But Harris comes back with a brutal, violent jab into McFarland's neck. And the Deacons take full advantage, converting from the foul line, as well as making the, the field goal off the dead ball. It was essentially a seven point swing. So there was a foul on the three point shot. That made it a dead ball. We visited with John Hughes at halftime just to get a clarification. It was a dead ball, flagrant technical foul. So there were three shots on the three pointer. Then there were two shots for the, for the technical foul. Wake got the basketball, made a three. So out of that, seven straight for Wake. It was a 12-2 Wake Forest run after the foul and the ejection of Harris to give Wake a one point lead at the half. So Gonzaga, Gonzaga gets the first possession, a miss from Olenek and a miss from Sacre. And here we go, one point Wake Forest lead after they trailed by as many as 13 in the first half. These first five minutes, all this critical coming out of the locker room, but in particular, when you've had a momentum swing, as we witnessed at the end of that first half. Does Gonzaga reclaim the momentum or the Deacons continue on a run? Williams missing a three. Bobby Sacre with the rebound. Goodson brings it back for Gonzaga. Leading score for Gonzaga is Matt Bolden. He gives it up to Goodson. Gray doesn't have a shot. Gonzaga's third leading scorer. And on just the second possession, he bricks it. Sacre with the rebound. Inside, muscling his way on a second effort, able to draw the foul from McFarland as he'll shoot to two free throws. Take a look at the first half numbers. Wake Forest with a terrible shooting start. They get hot at the end to make it 32%. A 16 to 4 run overall by Wake Forest. 12 2 run after the ejection of Harris. Well, Gonzaga in a situation now a bit stunned, like deer in the headlights. They need to have some possessions, have some success offensively, start to feel good about themselves again and try and recapture that momentum. Wake Forest wants to continue to build off their late rush against Gonzaga. Even at 34, Wake Forest team has lost its last two. They lost at home to William & Mary by 10. Then they lost earlier this week on the road at Purdue. And an offensive foul called against Al Farouk Aminu. That is number four against the sophomore big man for Wake Forest. Now, correction. Correction. The foul was against Williams, which is his first. And that's a break for Wake Forest. It's not against Aminu. It's against Williams. That's his first. Holden finds a wide open Kelly Olenek. Jump ball as Olenek manages to get the rarely seen wedge shot. You see that more often in Nerf basketball when you're playing in the living room mm -hmm. as a kid. Unusual area for the peach or the leather to get stuck. Wedged between the backboard and the side of the rim. If you try and do that, it might take you 100 attempts before you can actually squeeze one in there. If you try that in a game of force, then you're winning the game. You're winning that letter. Well, particularly from long distance. Harris off the catch gives it back to Ishmael Smith. Aminu banging on the post with Olenek. El Farouk Aminu draws a double and he walks. Well, good double by Gonzaga. Just a collective awareness for where Aminu is on the floor. And every time he gets a catch, he's going to be swarmed like bees on honey down in the post by white jerseys. The last three games, Aminu has more turnovers than field goals. Gray off the catch, three, no, and he's over two shooting. Rebound battle won by Wake. Harris throwing it off of Olenek in front of the Gonzaga bench. Well, the Harris ejection, the subsequent run by Wake Forest has unnerved Gonzaga. A bit rattled, which is understandable. They have to reclaim some momentum, some semblance of, of rhythm. McFarland for three. 
A big man who hadn't hit one in over a year misses again. Smith to the hole. Over Sacre. McFarland there for the finish. The penetration by Ishmael Smith. You see good to come right back. And he gets one of his own. There's the one-man fast break, the beep beeper, Dimitri Goodson. Even at 36. I was going to say on that last possession was the penetration. Good defense by Goodson there, smothering Ishmael Smith. Ahead to Bolden. Bolton. Touched by Smith, count the bucket. Good call. Well, you are starting to see the track meet that we anticipated at the outset of this broadcast. See Goodson with the finish. Two-point Gonzaga lead in the building where the Bulldogs have only been beaten three times in the fifth year of the McCarthy Athletic Center. Gonzaga is 65-3 here all the time. Only Santa Clara, Washington State, and Portland State last year have defeated Gonzaga in this building. C.J. Harris's three gives Wake Forest a one-point lead again. Boy, is Harris a cool customer. A freshman with ice in his veins on the road, a tough environment, dialing up the three ball. In his first career start, he has 12 points for a Wake Forest team that had been struggling shooting the basketball. And Harris making the most of his opportunity. You know, Gaudio with the green light. Gray missing either a shot or a lob to the hoop as his offensive struggles continue. Well, Ishmael Smith with the delivery and Goodson slow to get out on that closeout. You give Harris any di daylight, he will tickle the twine. Smith to Aminu at the high post. Aminu stripped by Gray. Smith gets it back, drops it for Williams, who's fouled by Sacre. We're starting to see Goodson and Ishmael Smith both utilize their speed at the offensive end of the court. Good penetration and drop off by Ishmael Smith to Williams. That's the ability to get into the lane, get Gonzaga defenders to help uphill, and the dump off pass to Williams. You know, asked Ishmael Smith the last couple of years, I mean, he gets injured, he gets his playing time taken away by Jeff Teague. Wake Forest disappointing in the last year, losing in the first round at Cleveland State. He said, would you describe this frustrating? He says, no, it's been fun. Really? Fun? Yeah. He said, you know, through it all, I've learned a lot, I've experienced a lot, it's all been fun. Kind of like a roller coaster ride, the ups and downs. Sacre missing the hook. Olenek battling for the board. It's Weaver who comes away with it for Wake Forest. The Deeks, an aggressive effort here. L.D. Williams misses Sacre boards. Weaver steals it from Bolden. Give it back to L.D. Williams. Can't finish over Sacre. It's Smith there for the tip. The second effort, and again, just the aggressiveness. The Deacons have been ignited. And as a result, playing on their toes, and you're seeing that assertive approach at both ends of the floor, defensively, bringing the energy, and then offensively with the second shots, the effort, attacking the iron. Substitution with Wake up by five. It was the Demon Deacons down by 13 in the first half. But C.J. Harris shooting the Demon Deacons back into it. And a 25-9 run by Wake Forest on John Zag. Plus Beat Cancer, the Bee Foundation will proudly award 100% of your donation directly to fund cancer research. Log on to JimmyV.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. Jimmy V Week continues from Spokane, Washington, the McCarthy Athletic Center, where Wake Forest has come back from a 13-point deficit in the first half against the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Well, and Carter, we talked about aggressiveness, and Gonzaga set the tone early. There's been the counter punching by Wake Forest. 
And now the Zags looking to have a little counter punch of their own. Great block by Ishmael Smith. He has done it everywhere on the floor. In transition, rebounding, and now a block shot for the senior out of Concord, North Carolina. And Wake Forest dominating the Bulldogs on the boards. 30 to 19. Goodson with the technical foul. Technical foul on Dimitri Goodson after the foul was called on Olenek. Goodson bounced the basketball in midcourt. So Olenek gets a personal. Dimitri Goodson gets a personal and a technical foul. Boy, the bleeding continues. Murphy's Law here. What a stretch for Gonzaga. I think Dimitri Goodson was more just frustrated. But again, you've got to use some sense in terms of poise, exhibiting a level of calm in the midst of competition. Wake Forest used the last Gonzaga technical foul as a springboard. When Elias Harris committed the flagrant personal foul and was ejected, the score was 31 to 22 in favor of Gonzaga. Wake responded with a 12-2 run. It's now a 26.